So this year, I, I think was kind of like a good bad golf shot. If you had an irrigated cereal crop, I can see each and every one of the smiles on your faces. So I know you're doing great. <laughs> I've never seen an inch of water make so many bushels than I did this year. A lot of that comes from that big fiery thing that's a million times bigger than the sun, uh, than, than Earth. We had 50, almost 18% more heat units this year in Strathmore. Um, more photosynthesis, more green. Anyhow, I thought I'd be doing myself a favor by trying to get my kids involved in this whole drone and aerial imagery thing. And I was cutting the hair of my daughter last night. And all this, this, these aren't my kids. I've got four of them, I love them. They will not have a drone for many years. I also have some chickens at home and I love marketing, I love business. That's part of the reason why I really like um, this topic that I've been invited to talk to you guys about. Um, I've got four dozen eggs in my car, but only if you're liberal. <laughs> $25 a dozen, carbon tax included. And I always like to give a bit of an update on the climate crisis. Um, a okay, where sea levels are still where they are. Something I didn't really realize until somebody told me this is water doesn't come into our globe or leave our globe. Same amount of water. And I never thought about that until you told me that. So before I get into the top 10, um, I want to talk about the last 20 years and what I think the next 20 years are going to be, which is kind of what I've picked my shelf life at. I started at 23. Um, again, early fungicides became widely accepted as working when I first got into agronomy. Jerry Colbrook, the tilt guy, told me about, well, it was Harrington, so as you look at it sideways and it got sick, but um, we talked about tilt and leaf disease. That was pretty cool. PGRs were kind of this new, exciting thing coming onto the market, but I will call the last 20 years grossly old-fashioned compared to what I think is gonna happen in the next 20 years in agriculture. Um, and I like to use pictures, I don't like to read to you guys um, to talk. Um, variable rate, it's kind of heard of 20 years ago, but now it's pretty easy to do. It's fairly practiced, well or not, it is yet to be defined. Um, we're going to talk a lot about measuring here. I don't like this map at all. This is kind of a generic, just a clip off of Google. Um, but VRE, um, Rob's site kind of gave me that language, variable rate, everything. Why aren't we putting the right thing in the right place as much as we can? Makes sense. Um, this uh, dot kind of came up, has kind of been shelved for now. I don't think this is going away. But it was kind of a highlight when I'm thinking of the, the things in the last 20 years. Um, supply chain fragility. We realize how sensitive we are to one blip by one boat in one canal, how that can mess with our lives. CWB in my tenure was abolished. Thank you, Mr. Harper. I like to blame Harper for everything. I've learned that from our leader now, but I, I do like to give credit where credit is due, so thank you, Mr. Harper. Interest rates, one of my unique, one of my unique abilities outside of food in my teeth after a meal, you guys are all far enough away you can't see that, is borrowing. I love to borrow. And my financial advisor told me that he knows that interest rates are too high when I'm paying down debt. So, that's up. Next 20 years, um, I've heard, I don't know how they calculate this, but in the next 27 years to 2050, we have to make as much food in the next 27 years as we've made from day dot. It's a lot to comprehend. It's a lot of food. I'm not worried about feeding 10 billion people at all. But I think labor, we're already seeing it. Um, I had a really cool plane ride back with Daryl Monette uh, from Ag in Motion a couple years ago. 
he picked up his book when we took off and i said no no put that book back because we're talking the whole way back and we did it and he did put it back it was a really cool conversation but labor on the biggest farm in canada maybe the states too i don't know i don't know where their acres are at he said in 2021 that his he, he was this close to not having seeded acres because of labor he also said that i asked him about dots specifically and he said put an army of those things in a field and i'll smoke it with as many borgos as i have and i'll win every single time so autonomy on scalable farms like that i'm not sure if there's a fit there um, but labor is going to be an issue <clears throat> i don't think autonomy is going away this would be perfect in organic systems scalability again when we're talking about 5,000, 10,000, 30,000 acre farms. I'm not too sure. Um, Rob Syke, another thing from Rob. He called the European Union the next agricultural museum for the planet. Hmm. How many weeks ago? Um, not many. We've got 10 more years of the European Union contributing food to our globe. Funny what happens when people get hungry. This geography, within 100 miles of the Rocky Mountains, is uh, talked about on a global economic scale because we've got a renewable, more or less, sense of irrigation water. And when we get a longer growing season, through climate changing, we won't get into that, um, more heat units, water, it's good for our systems big farms this is going to be a heavy theme in my top uh, topic big farms are getting bigger quickly surprise surprise there's there's about when i started paying down debt um, and the joke at agritrade was uh, got a hell of a deal for you on financing prime plus nine this is going to be a shake up um, in the economy it's i don't think it's a surprise we will as warren buffett says we'll see who's swimming naked when the tide goes down who's over leveraged. I, I like more heat units. We grew an incredible amount of grain this year for the rain we got. There's no way four and a half, five inches of rain should have made over 60 bushels of wheat. The irrigation, I, I've never seen in my 20 years irrigated cereal yields like it did this year. I'll welcome that. And we're gonna see a lot more of this sexy crop. I haven't grown much corn, but I think in the next 20 years, I will be growing a lot of corn. There's your picture, Andre. Bug in a jug. <laughs> I, I, type, I had to put that in there because whether it be through regulation overstep or you can only buy so much fertilizer for your farm, no matter which way you cut it, biologicals are here and your doorsteps are going to be lined up with people selling them. I love soil biology. I, I traveled the organic conference market for a year to get out of my comfort zone. They're really passionate about biology and they're really good at it. And I don't know why there's more cross conversations between what we're doing and what the organic market is doing. Um, but nobody knows hardly anything about it. So I jokingly say that as long as I want to work in the agriculture market in and around soil biology, I will be employed. And traceability. Again, not going away. This started back when I first started in 2002. I remember sitting at the desk in Vulcan buying grain and Randy Cook came in and said, holy shit, BSE just came. It started then with food passports Consumers want to know where their food come from. So are you keeping data? Are you tracking what you're doing on your farm? Because the mom with the kids wants to know. So number one trait, farmers don't farm or they shouldn't. They do, but I think we need to change the conversation a little bit away from the blue bib coverall. I hate that image to an educated, trained financier a CFO. So when you go on your cruise and somebody asks you what you do, 
you never just farm. You're a CEO of a multi-million dollar business. Raise their eyebrows and engage them in a conversation about what you do, not just farm. More educated people are farming. Succession planning and youth. Guess how many farms have a succession plan to pass the farm on to the next generation? Throw a number out. 20. Almost double. 12%. I've always, another jokingly thing I've said since I started this is I think you can become a multimillionaire if you can talk to a farm about succession planning. This is a tax disaster waiting to happen. How many people don't have a will? Canada-wide. Throw a number out. Less than 50 have a will. No wonder lawyers have a good business. So, my mentor, as, as I kind of came out of school and, and started doing this, last, I, I went and had a drink with him a year ago, he called me a mentor to his kids. Luckily I shaved, I don't have any signs of gray hair this morning. Um, but getting youth involved in your business, I, I always, I've always kind of had the thought that I was a young guy in the market. Um, but a 70 or 80 year old person managing the farm, sorry Uncle Joe, that he, I wouldn't want you managing my 28 chickens at home. <laughs> Let alone the most powerful country on the planet. Get the youth involved, educate them, train them. It's okay to delegate and pass it on to a more active mind. Peter Zihan, um, that's my business partner, Andrew, that's Peter in the middle. Uh, I didn't know anything about FBN, so I put myself in the belly of the beast a year ago in Omaha. The conference sucked, but the keynote speakers were amazing. And they, they are a sales <coughs> marketing machine. They might have one year left in Canada. Just a guess. So, big farm, uh, just a bit of a highlight on, on the last census. Big farms are getting bigger. 4,000 farms <clears throat> off the map compared to the last census, down uh, 2%. Acres up. How does that happen? Because that's kind of like trading that guy for that guy. <laughs> I haven't watched a minute of Flames Hockey this year, and I am better for it. We're taking, you know, and I, I give this presentation to the kids, the grade four kids all the time. Every year, I, I, for the first time, the most nervous presentation I'm going to give this year is to my grade four son. I've been practicing for six years, and we talk about how many soccer fields per second are being taken off the planet, usually around the city. That guy. The black, number one, water-ridden soil, compared to the stuff, I worked in Oyen, so I can say this, Oyen. <laughs> Erwin Kuhn, God rest his soul, told me that the birds fly upside down so they don't make it any worse. <laughs> Average age of farmers, this is a shocker, I was kind of hoping that it would go down, so <clears throat> I guess I'm still on the younger side. Um, up. We need to get youth involved in this sexy industry. The big farms, over 50% of receipts come from farms generating over $2 million. You are a CEO, you're managing huge dollars. Wow, the banks love this. So should you, especially if you want to sell. Sell high, buy low. I don't know when land is going to go low. I have a habit of asking Greg's dad every crop tour what a quarter of irrigated land is worth and it's gone up drastically over the last five years. This was pleasantly surprising, especially when my kid came home last week and talked about bugs and diets and I said not in this house. <laughs> um, ask, you know, I, uh, yeah, I won't, don't have enough time for that. But the bug space build in Alberta last year, the year before, was the highest amount ever done. Again, guess what's happening? All the small feeders and the backgrounders that were feeding a thousand head, they're, they're off the map. The big 
feedlots are being built and they're being built big. So GDP numbers, I didn't realize how big Lethbridge County was until like GDP wise. Alberta hires 69,000 people in agriculture, $10.4 billion industry, and Lethbridge County is flirting with four billion of that. Water, sun, and manure. I love manure. <laughs> Vision and confidence. I watched this, I never really thought Arnie was a smart guy, I just thought he always kind of fell in the right place at the right time, but I watched his little three-part Netflix series I think he's pretty smart. And he had a vision when he was very, very young to be the best athlete, then when he was done with that, the best actor, and then when he was done with that, the politician. He's done it. But he had a vision the entire time. What's your vision? Boss and leader. I slid this in there. I'm gonna slide it in again a little later. Don't be a boss. Don't call the people you rent your land off of a landlord, because they are one of your most important partners. Or partner, you're not a landlord. Communicate with them, tell them what you're doing and why. Invite them to harvest. They're never afraid to fail. Speaking of interest rates, before I forget, I, I had a really cool conversation with um, Robert Angelic um, in the spring. He says that he has a hard time justifying farming when he's borrowing at over 3%. Hmm. Get 3% interest anywhere right now? So that's kind of scary when a guy like that uses language like that. One of the best questions I ever get engaged with on a farmer meeting level basis is a future history question. Where do you want to be in three years if everything has gone perfect and what's happened? It gets you engaged in that vision. The best conversations I have when I ask this question, because guys are terrible communicators, are when the wives are in the crowd. I love those sessions. <coughs> Salesmanship or communicators. It sucks trying to work with somebody who doesn't want to communicate. It doesn't usually last well. You need to have some people skills. I just liked this, I don't expect you to read it. Um, good person versus a bad person. Nothing happens without the sale. Whether you're a farmer, an agronomist, a fuel salesperson, a seed salesperson. I love communicating with Greg because he's got knowledgeable information and it's quick to respond almost every single time and I'm probably one of his smallest clients. I, I appreciate that level of service. And how are you going to segregate yourself and your business that does the exact same thing as somebody else when the labor pool is limited? Do I want to go work for the guy that's barking commands or, or the person that doesn't communicate? What attracts people to come to your business and not theirs? Is it a fun environment? Maybe it's got the nicest, newest machinery, but it's really hard to work for that person. Um, book I cannot get my ears out of. I, I can't, I can read, I just don't. I like to listen to books. So I'm listening to the Elon Musk book. It's fascinating. The Steve Jobs way I read about, I listened to four or five years ago. I don't know that I'd want to work for either of these guys, but they're a very special exception to the rule. Very cool people. Number five, a board of directors a network, a structure. Farms that I've had for 20 years rely on a lot of people. Whether it be banker, lender, marketing, accountant, retail, machinery dealer, lawyer, peer group. I've been part of a peer group for four years now. We mandatorily meet twice a year and we talk about everything. Rarely, rarely agronomy and we're all agronomists. We talk about how to manage people, insurance, markets, tools, technology, um, everything. Other trusted colleagues. Sharing your ideas with somebody else about your business and having a critical eye on it, I think is a really good practice. There's company structure and defined roles and heaven forbid there's quarterly meetings and there's communication with the partners and the people involved in your business. Weekly might be a little too much. I know farms that do it. Safety meetings, 
What's wrong with wearing a PPE vest on your farm? The image of that when somebody's buying your food, safety, it's a vest, it's a great idea. They usually have a life outside the farm too. Um, it's not all farm all the time. Who's on your bench? Those guys are pretty good. So number six, they value their team and great service. Um, Jim Collins, good to great. I forget what his second one was. Something along the same line. Get the right people on the bus, the wrong people off, and the right people in the right seats on that bus. Hire slowly, fire quickly. I love that term. Good, good, uh, a good team, right? Pay your people appropriately. This, um, whether, <laughs> maybe I'll just skip to the next. If, if something is free, you're not the customer, you're the product. And this irks me since I left corporate because I've actually had to charge for my services and make a living off of what I do, not selling things. Reputation is all I have to sell. Whether it be heat pumps or free agronomy, <laughs> nothing ever is free. Thank you for lunch break. <laughs> hey, nothing's free. If you're going for the free agronomy, guess what? I gave away free agronomy when I was with Ag Pro between Red Deer and Lethbridge. 400 farmers on my list and the first thing that I was asked when I got back is what'd you sell? No way. You have to sell things to give away free advice. Pay for good service. So whether it be succession planning or accounting, the cheapest, it's usually a get what you pay for scenario. And that comes down to employees too. When you're running a million dollar machine, putting down $200 an acre worth of inputs, get somebody that is good and pay them appropriately. Um, typically, I see a lot of success when there's loyalty and trust involved in a conversation. There are farmers who notoriously change drills every single year because they're not happy that they raised a great crop. There's farmers that bounce around from agronomist to agronomist to agronomist because they didn't grow a great crop. I don't think that that's good business habit. Boss versus a leader again. Farmers are typically succeeding with tech adoption. BASF meeting a bunch of years ago in Strathmore at the Travel Lodge. I forget the guy that was brought in. He was a marketing guy. He was fairly full on him. But he said, how many of you here have a smartphone? And half the crowd stuck their hand up. And he said, what are the other half of you doing here? You're running a multi-million dollar business that operates on a second by second world economy and you don't, you can't keep up with the world. That's a disadvantage. This, I didn't, luckily, because we got terrible service in here for um, cell connection, but I don't know how many times I've watched this video, it's the, called the Future, Future of Farming, John Deere. This was from the first edition, there's another one that I didn't think was <coughs> as good, but this is, I think, pretty real. Like, hey, we're seeding this crop and it looks like the forecast just changed, blah, blah, blah. Here's your, your prescription, accept or deny. Uh, one of my best friends has been working with a company called Precision AI now uh, for a few years. He thinks within five years, this will be fairly broad scale on a, a green on green sensory tech. Is anybody else here scared, excuse the language, shitless of kosher? <laughs> 249, what's next? 14, confirmed. Thanks, Charles. <laughs> like, this is scary stuff. So I asked Bryce Edgar a few years ago, at, I think it was, well, it's probably five or six years ago, uh, what his opinion was of sensory tech and herbicide resistance. One of the better questions I've asked, I got a, it's a good one. He said that there's stuff in the vault, but it's $200 an acre. That lets us spray it affordably, only on the spots that need it. So tech adoption, fairly loosely held. Uh, at that farmer to farmer conference, there's a company there that had sensory tech for herbicide in row crops. 
80 to 90% reduction in their synthetic input on weeds, but it's really easy when your rows are 20 or 30 inches apart to tell what's in between. This is row, don't spray that wheat. Spraying a wild oat and wheat, that will be Mount Everest. That'll be awesome. I had precise on here first until I saw this picture, because I like to tote myself as a precision agronomist, and precision doesn't mean variable rate nitrogen, just means being precise. It's not all about 34, 17 on every acre. That's not precise. That's what grandpa did. Don't do what grandpa did. But accurate and precise, I liked that definition. And another one of the, um, this is a tagline from Elston Solberg, you cannot manage what you do not measure. So as hard as it is sometimes to sell a soil test on a field that's intended to going into peas, Sometimes that's the most valuable soil test I take because there's 80 pounds of nitrogen there. And we make one little switch and we save 80 pounds of nitrogen for a wheat or a canola and we put the peas on the low. So a lot of the funding and programming, whether it be off-calf, that was capped last spring, or 4R, or whatever else is next, um, from the funding perspective, requires everything that a good agronomist does. A soil test, a tissue test, data management, yield history, weights, fertilizer, NERP, nitrous oxide emissions reduction protocol. One of the first six agronomists trained in the province in 2016. There has not been one dollar transacted by NERP. It's hopeful that it's going to go nitrogen in, nitrogen out. Are you? Questions for Matt? I love hybrid rye. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I know. I've bought it off you three times. <laughs> well, I think Matt had a kind of a good, broad overview of ag. He sees a lot of farms, big and small. Um, do you have any, any questions for Matt before we uh, turn it over to the next presentation? Yes. Any speculation on machine learning, artificial intelligence, and how that's going to push on market predictions and financial management and that kind of stuff? Machine learning, AI. Um, we've been using this in our small little outfit, Mike, for three years, heavily. The one colony we work with that does full farm VR, 13,500 acres, has 20 million data points that we compute per year. 20 million. We can't physically do that ourselves. Um, I think it's going to be a game changer from even what we do. I'm not worried about ever re being replaced by a robot because they don't have my eyes and my experience. Um, but when it comes to data management from what we're collecting, because I am just sick to my stomach, how, like we're just gagged with data, 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 data in agriculture. And even the companies that are trying to collect all this data don't know what to do with it. So machine learning is figuring out what we're going to do with it. And um, how did Rob put this years ago? When all this data was being just inundated with to farmers, is that data is not, um, I'm gonna have to think about this one for a minute. But it doesn't mean anything in, in, unless there's some intelligence put into it and some thought process. So the machine learning from what we're doing in research and, and making our, our own zones that, that we influence based on 20 years of experience. From the marketing standpoint, I, I went down the rabbit hole because I'm fascinated by Elon Musk in the middle of his book and, and the AI videos that polluted my, my social for a little bit. And I thought that guy doesn't talk like Elon, looks like him moves like him, but does not talk like Elon Musk. Like he's got Asperger's and he, he's, he stutters and he talks very uniquely. So I did a little Google research. Sure enough, it's an AI scan. It's a video of Elon Musk talking about the marketing, you know, put $500 in and in 30 days you're gonna be a millionaire. Sounds too good to be true, right? Kind of like free agronomy. <laughs> <laughs> um, marketing, I, I don't know. But agronomy, farming, machine learning, 
big, big steps. Like, the, the next 20 years are gonna be so fun. And I'm not a techie, I love tech, hate setting it up. But we got a couple of guys in the office that are wizards with it. Any other? Something else, 3D printing food. 3D printing food. No, I can't I, I, I think it will be coming. Might be, yeah. I don't know if I'll ever buy it. It's gonna come from Faba Beans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, I have never had a Beyond Beef burger either. So call me a laggard. I think I'm kind of a, a first in line kind of guy, but I don't know, right or wrong. But in other parts of the world, absolutely. Like, so um, one of the more impactful things I've heard in the last couple of years was the president uh, or CEO of AGT Foods. And I always botch his name. Uh, Mira is off the teeth. Mira. Um, plant proteins are never gonna go away. So if you're not gonna get in the market as a farmer, then shame on you. That market is global and it's big. They think it's out in space, eh? Maybe. <laughs> Growing something on Mars. Sorry, going back to Elon again. <laughs> Any other questions for Matt? Okay, well join me in thanking Matt. So.